You probably have already heard about cryptocurrency and blockchain. Well, if you don't know, but wait a second, only 5.3% of you guys subscribe to my channel, 94.7% of the viewers don't. Please, for the love of God, subscribe to my channel. I have big dreams with my channel. I can only achieve them with the help of you guys. Thank you so much in advance. A blockchain is a growing list of records called blocks which are interconnected by utilizing cryptography. Each block contains a cryptographic hash of the previous block, a timestamp and exchange information. Utilizing blockchain, we can securely store information over the shared system where everybody can see but can't do any alteration. Blockchain will track all information trade called ledger and it uses a distributed system to verify every exchange. But what does it have to do with Web3, the third generation of World Wide Web? Web1 refers to the first stage of the World Wide Web evolution. Earlier, there were only a few content creators in Web 1.0, with a huge majority of users who are consumers of content. Personal web pages were common, consisting mainly of static pages hosted on ISP-run web servers or on free web hosting services. By static, it means talk about emails, but you can't refresh emails but wait for new emails to arrive at a particular time. It was a kind of library mostly used by doctors, scientists and researchers. In Web 1.0, advertisements on websites while surfing the internet are banned. Web 1.0 is a content delivery network CDN, that enables the showcase of a piece of information on websites. It can be used as a personal website. It costs the users as per pages viewed. It has directories that enable the user to retrieve a particular piece of information. Also, internet during that time therefore became very expensive. Slowly, it became cheaper and several changes took place to bring us Web2. The transition was never a sudden change, but slow and sure adaptation of newer technologies and services. Web 2.0 made a new era of social media networks and made the otherwise observant web interactive. Today consumers and brands have a voice that they can use to give their opinions to the world. It came with the age of complete exposure and visibility. In short, the revolution of Web 2.0 was a dream come true for those who wanted to reach the world. However, it was until the United Nations realized that users in the internet had risen from 738 million heads to 3.2 billion people between 2005 and 2015. And they were bringing a massive amount of data with themselves. As soon as big tech giants realize that there is an enormous amount of personal data at their fingertips, the most expensive asset, the big centralized servers like Google, Facebook and Amazon, started stockpiling them. Instead of payment of money, we became the products. We knowingly or unknowingly traded our privacy in the online world just for convenience or services. Apps now could be used as websites like Office or Google Docs. Large tech companies now act as a trusted information provider between two entities, one that is you and the other who buys your data to target you with relevant ads. We unknowingly lost control over our own data and by the time we realized it was already too late. Web3 has now come to give us back that control. Well, it is the idea to use technologies to decentralize the web. Web3 was first coined by Ethereum's co-founder, Gavin Wood. This however should not be con confused with Tim Berners-Lee's version of Web3.0 which bases on the idea to make every bit of information machine readable on the web. Uh, we will talk about that later in this video. Hence, Web3 is distinct from Tim Berners-Lee's 1999 concept of a semantic web. In 2006, Tim Berners-Lee described the semantic web as a component of Web 3.0. Specific visions for Web3 differs and the term has been described by Bloomberg as hazy. Described Web3 as an idea that would bring that would build financial assets in the form of tokens into the inner workings of almost anything you do online. Technologists and journalists have described Web3 as a possible solution to concerns about the over-centralization of the web in a few big tech companies. Some have expressed the notion that Web3 could improve data security, scalability and 
privacy beyond that is currently possible with Web 2.0 platforms. Bloomberg states that skeptics say the idea is a long way from proving its use beyond niche applications. Many of them tools aimed at crypto traders. To boil down in my way of saying, think you booked a small hotel for your trip, which is run by some owner. There is a common swimming pool, there is nothing much you can do in the pool, but thank god you have got one. Next you go to a water park, suddenly there is more than just a pool and you have access to so many other activities, rather. Think of it like a normal bank of river, purified by other companies or private individuals according to some basic rules of the government. Next you go to a forest lake which is governed by mother nature herself. She of course has a basic set of rules that you need to follow but that is for keeping the place safe and pretty. Nobody can claim the space to be theirs but can be used by all at the same time. In short, there is no central control over the place. Technically, people will own what they use. The internet will solely belongs to the users. Users will determine what algorithm has to do. Creators will be paid more for views. We will vote for a platform and there will be no private data leaks either. Apart from blockchain, several other technologies would collaborate and come on the forefront to achieve everything that we are expecting from Web 3.0. It means that integration of blockchain technology would, won't be enough. We need emerging technologies to become the central component of Web 3.0 and to make the web semantic and decentralized, according to Tim Berners-Lee. With AR, VR and high fidelity 3D graphics, the user interface of the digital web would combine with the real world. The gap between the physical and the digital will be filled. IoT devices running with advanced networks like 5G, the web will be ubiquitous via internet connect computer. Interfaces of physical objects, everything from watches, phones, cars, drones, even ovens and refrigerators will be connected to the internet. With AI technology, computers will learn to offer user-focused interactions. Features like chatbots with would act on the front end and combined with ML algorithms working on the users will make user experience relevant and semantic via analyzing structured and unstructured data. Well, the change or a better term revolution is coming soon and there are already apps based. But this looks like a high level expectation from profiting companies who currently has majority of internet under them. It is quite foolish if you think that they will adopt such technologies and give up their control over your data and incur losses. Well, the change, or a better term, revolution, is coming soon, and there are already apps based on Web3 technologies like Brave. These are, there are also apps that are slowly adapting or implementing Web3 technologies. Now you might say that, why did the world switch from Web1 to Web2 in the past? Well, the answer is clear and simple. Web2 is more profitable for them than Web1, also made the general consumers happy with cheaper internet. Like who? goes through the privacy policy of Instagram before creating an account and posting, well read it for yourself. And it is hence unlikely that companies will give up their control. The inception of decentralization of the web first came when the massive data in the tech behemoths who had the capital and the connection started showing their nasty side. There is countless news about popular brands selling and being careless with our data. Today, users worldwide have started looking away from convenience and questioning the worth of a quality that exposed to them and increased chances of instances of financial loss and identity theft over time. Web3, as I have explained in this video, will be solving these problems by targeting them. Now, for the general public, as we know, we are switching to some different thing and we are wanting something else and we are caring more about our data and obviously we are switching to those services those who do care about our data and give us entire control on that so slowly but surely i hope that the internet will be a better place thank you so much for watching this video do like share and subscribe and share it with your friends family whoever you find that will be very helpful for the channel. And what do you think about Web3? Comment down below. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.